Hi, church family. I hope that you're having a great week. And I'm excited again as we're launching our Wednesday night streams. And uh, thank you so much for, for joining me this evening. And I just hope that you'll make it a priority to connect with us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. We have this on YouTube and on Facebook. And I remind you that uh, this is all connected to our Bible reading plan. We would just love you, even if you uh, haven't started yet, you can just jump in exactly where we are. But we're going to read the Bible together as a church. And uh, this next week, uh, tomorrow through next Wednesday, we'll be reading Matthew 16 through 17. And we'll be reading Psalm 110 through 114. So just love to have you uh, read along. It, it's really about a chapter or two a day, about 10 to 12 chapters a week. It, it's not too difficult at all, but uh, just think it's, it's a great way for us to grow together and be connected together in Scripture. So I'll be teaching from Matthew, and I'm actually um, not in the previous week a little further than that because uh, in the earlier part of September, we were scheduled to read through the Sermon on the Mount. It's uh, chapters 5 through 7. It is, some have said, the greatest sermon in the history of the world. These are the words of Jesus uh, teaching and preaching. And so it's a beautiful, it's just hard for me to pass that up and not teach something from it. And so uh, one of the things that I see clearly that I, I hadn't paid as much attention to in previous years is what it says to us about relationships, what it says to us about um, how God is calling us to treat one another. And I think this is an important time for us to hear this message for a few reasons. Uh, the past few years with the pandemic, it's been really hard. It's been hard on relationships and friendships. There have been isolation that we've experienced. I, I think a lot of uh, marriages have, have had struggles during this time. So it's important for us to consider how Jesus wants us to treat one another. I also think just with uh, the, the division in our country politically um, and in a lot of other ways, there's, I, we all know there's a lot of division. I think maybe this is an important season for us as Christians to hear the words of Jesus on how we are called to treat one another. So I've got some scriptures here, and uh, we'll just kind of jump right in and let me share a few thoughts about each, and then I'd love to pray with you at the end. So the first one is Matthew 5, 7. This is one of the Beatitudes. It simply says, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. So God is calling us to be a people of mercy, to show mercy, extend mercy to people. And so I might just ask you, how are you doing? with uh, the challenges that we've faced over the few years. How are you doing? How are your relationships going with, with your family, um, with, with friends? Are you having some conflict? And uh, I might even ask you specifically, is there somebody in your life that, that needs mercy? Is there somebody in your life that God is calling you to extend mercy to them? Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe the conflict is painful. Uh, but we just are reminded today that blessed are the merciful, that uh, as we show mercy to the people around us, we're going to receive um, a beautiful mercy from, from God's own hand in our lives. So with God's help, as we move forward through these challenging times, uh, let's, uh, let's remember all of the mercy that he has poured out upon us, and let's be a people of mercy who extend mercy. So let's move now a little later. We're still in Matthew 5, and this is verse 23 and 24. Uh, Jesus says, Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. And so I... I think here that we see the importance of relationships in God's eyes, the, the importance of reconciliation. I believe that God has a heart of reconciliation. He wants to be reconciled to us, but I believe he wants us to be reconciled to one another. And, and there's, there's a real significant emphasis here that if we have hurt someone, if we have sinned against them in some way, that we take the responsibility upon ourselves that we do what needs to be done to repair the relationship, to seek forgiveness, to make things right, um, to be reconciled to that person. That that is our calling, our responsibility to do our part to try to heal any broken relationships. Now, of course, it's a two-way street. 
Uh, it, it may not always work out the way that we'd hoped, but as Christians, um, we're, we're called to peace and reconciliation. The other thing that's really interesting in this verse is God is making the point here. Um, he's asking us to be at peace with others. To such, It's so important to him that he's saying even in the context of worship, of course, the, the worship system in, in the, at that time that he was speaking to is different than our worship system um, of today. But, but the idea is similar, that, that if you are gathered in worship and you are bringing your, your offering of praise or in those days making an actual sacrifice, he, he's basically saying it's so important for me that we heal this relationship that you deal with if you've sinned against somebody or hurt them in some way. It's so important for, for, in God's eyes for us to make that right that he's basically saying leave the worship gathering, go make things right with that person, and then come back. And, uh, and then come and worship with us. And I believe at that point, our worship would be more pleasing to God, more acceptable to God. Um, so, so it's a big deal. Uh, God would call us to be reconciled to people, especially if, if we have hurt them or sinned against them in some way, that we do everything that we can to make it right. Let's keep, let's keep going. Now we're in Matthew 6, verse 12. And this is a, a little section of the Lord's Prayer. It says, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. So, so obviously that's a part of the Lord's prayer that um, we are asking God to forgive us. And um, when we consider the, the sins of our life, uh, those moments of selfishness, the times that we have hurt other people, we realize we're asking God a lot to forgive us. And he's certainly willing to do that. Um, but but it, it's not only we're receiving forgiveness, but we are also offering forgiveness and so a few verses later, uh, Jesus says something. And so um, we're not only asked to forgive others by Jesus, this is a really important, significant issue in our lives that we need to work through. We, we talked through this at Sunday Night Connect, and I just made the comment that uh, sometimes for, for those of us who maybe we're not having a major struggle forgiving, we just are aware that... Um, so many people have had different experiences and some people have been deeply hurt, deeply wounded, abused, and, and some of us haven't. And so what do these verses mean for, for different people with, with very different experiences? In other words, how does someone forgive when they've been deeply, deeply hurt and wounded? And, and I just confess, obviously, I've, I've been hurt here and there, but I don't believe I've ever been the victim of abuse and and, and as a result, I, I don't feel like I'm having any struggles with forgiveness right now. But I, I realize I may be talking to somebody um, who's, who's listening to this teaching that uh, has really struggled with forgiveness because you have deep, deep wounds. And so I just want to speak a few things specifically to anybody in that situation um, about how do, we, how do we forgive people um, when we've been deeply wounded, when it, when it feels overwhelming and impossible. And so a couple of thoughts that I just want to share. The first is that we forgive by faith, um, that forgiveness is an act of our will, that it's a decision that we make, and it's something that we're doing by faith. And so a prayer that you could pray is, Lord, I, I need to forgive this person. I have a whole lot of emotion and pain and hurt and bitterness that I'm trying to deal with. And, uh, but, but Lord, my forgiveness is not based completely on my emotions. It's a decision. So you are calling me to forgive this person. So, dear Heavenly Father, um, I am asking for your help and for your strength. And by faith, I forgive this person today in the name of Jesus Christ. And so it's a decision that we make. It doesn't mean that your emotions are always going to be perfect. And, and so maybe that's the second thought is, uh, again, forgiveness is a commitment, a decision. But it doesn't mean that we're never going to experience negative emotions and so I want you to understand it's okay. You can forgive somebody by faith and you're asking God for help. But uh, the next day or in a few weeks or in a few months, it doesn't mean that you're not going to feel those emotions of, of hurt and anger and, and bitterness. Sometimes even something so strong that it feels like hatred. The, the, those emo we, we, the truth is we can't fully control our emotions. Uh, we have to learn how to deal with them, but we can't necessarily control them. So I would say we forgive by faith. And when those negative emotions pop back up, we just go right back to prayer. Lord, 
I forgave that person um, last month or last year, and but these feelings are coming back. And so, Lord, I'm just praying again that you would help me um, heal me of some of this pain. I'm asking for healing. And, and Lord, again, I just want to pray the prayer again. I forgive this person by faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, I believe that you are helping me. And even though my emotions may come and go, Lord, I'm making a decision by faith to forgive. So those would be my recommendations. The third thing that I would say about that is simply this, is uh, the same God who is asking you to forgive this person is the same God who loves you and is able to heal you even from the deepest wound. And I don't say that lightly. And I'm not saying that it's, it's always an immediate healing. This may be a journey or a process. But I want to say to you, God is calling you to forgive, but he is the same God who loves you and wants to bring healing and, uh, and, and restoration into your life. So we can pray that as well. God, this person has really hurt me. And by faith in the name of Jesus, I am forgiving them. But Lord, I need healing. I am struggling over here. Would you, would you bring a healing? Um, into, into my soul and, and help me be able to move beyond some of the pain and, and deep hurt that I've experienced. So thank you. I really hope that that's an encouragement, that that can help you. And I would just say if there's anybody in the church that's really struggling and you need to, some encouragement or you want me to pray with you, I'm happy to do that. Let's keep going. So, so we're, we're, um, we're going backward a little bit. Now we're back in Matthew 5. We hopped up to 6 and now we're dropping back. And uh, let me read to you in verse 43 and 44. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. I think that's a verse that would be good for us to hear um, in our culture right now with so much division. It may feel like you have more enemies now than you did two years ago. It may feel like there are people that you are having a lot of division with. Um, compared to two years ago. So I think maybe it's a, it's a great time for Christians, um, you know, who hold various political opinions, um, cultural opinions of, about all of the things that are happening, maybe people who would even view masks and vaccines and all of those things differently. I think uh, Christians who fall on whatever side of whatever issue, that this could be a great verse for us to consider today. Love your enemies. Help us, Lord. Help us love your enemies. And I want to say that Jesus is asking us to do something that is impossible. It is inconsistent with the selfish nature of the human heart to love. our. Now, I understand in the Old Testament, you know, we are asked to not harm our enemies. We're not supposed to steal um, uh, against our enemies. We're not supposed to bear false witness. We can't murder them. Okay. So I think it's reasonable to ask us not to harm them. But Jesus is asking us to do something that is an unreasonable request. He's saying in your heart, in your emotions, not only am I saying don't harm them, I'm saying I actually want you to care about them. I actually want you to love them and care about them. And so how can Jesus ask us to do that when it seems so unrealistic? Well, the answer to that is just in the simple message of the gospel. Uh, first, we are all sinners in need of forgiveness. God loved us so much he sent Jesus, and, and through the blood of Christ, the death of Christ, his crucifixion on the cross, his great sacrifice he made for us. If, if, if we will believe in Jesus, we, we can receive the forgiveness of our sins, welcomed into the family of God, receiving the gift of eternal life. So God sent Jesus to us so that we might be forgiven of our sins. And then he sent the Holy Spirit to us. And it's through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives that, that God is transforming us, changing us, making us more and more and more like Jesus. So for him to just say to us, love your enemies in and of our own strength, that's impossible. But we understand that through Jesus, we have been forgiven and that God is actively working in our hearts, in our character making us more like Jesus. The Holy Spirit is active. And so here's the beautiful part of this, that um, we can love our enemies, not in our, of our own strength, but as God continues to work in us and we submit ourselves to him, then he is changing us and, and developing us into a people who can actually love our enemies, to care about the people who despise us, oppose us, and hate us. 
that he's doing such a tremendous work in our hearts that we could actually love our enemies. It's a beautiful thing to consider. So let, let's transition now. The last verse I'm going to share with you, Matthew 7, and uh, this is just verse 1 and 2. It says, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I think this is a, a challenging one. One thing that I have maybe seen or experienced is I feel like some of the people who are really strong in their faith and, and seem to be pretty mature spiritually in a lot of ways, that, 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 that we're all prone to judging people. <laughs> it is a challenge. And sometimes the, the further along that you are, um, if you are holding yourself to a, a really significant standard spiritually by what you believe and how you live out your faith, and then you look around and you see other people who they don't seem as passionate about God, they, they, they don't seem to take their faith as seriously as you, it, it's challenging not to cast judgment. And, and so I just think this is an important one. I also think, again, it's important just in our day and age right now with all the division I think there's a whole lot of judgment going on on, on both sides of all of these issues, that, that there's a lot of finger pointing and, uh, and, and we're, we're making a whole lot of moral judgments against each other. So let's just hear this verse today. That is Jesus himself says, do not judge or you too will be judged. And so here is a simple reminder to Christians on whatever side of whatever issue you, you may be thinking of. Um, we are not called to judge. We are called to love and serve. And we are called to be a witness, a light in this world, a witness to other people. For Jesus, we're called to encourage. Uh, we're not called to judge. God is the judge, and he is the final judge. And that is his job. It's not our job. And so let's continue to love and serve and bring light to this world, and we will leave the judgment of sin and the judgment of world of the world in the capable hands of God and, and in, in his son, Jesus. So just a few final thoughts that I want to share with you this evening. Um, again, so much division in our country, our churches. Um, I feel like our church has actually handled this pretty well, but uh, this is, these have been really challenging days for a lot of churches in America where, where they've experienced a lot more division and conflict than we have. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful for the unity that we've been able to have. But the point is, there's, there's a lot of division politically on social media. I've never seen anything like it. In, uh, in, in my 48 years, um, I've, I've, I don't believe that I've experienced this much division in my lifetime. So why don't we just pause for a moment and let me just remind you again of a few of the phrases of Jesus, a few of his teachings that I've just shared with you. And, and, and again, keeping in mind everything swirling around us. Jesus says to us, blessed, blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful. Jesus says, forgive other people when they sin against you. Jesus says, love your enemies. And Jesus says, do not judge. Brothers and sisters, let's, let's try not to get caught up in all of the division and all of the anger and all of the hatred. And, and let's live out the, uh, the, 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 I guess this is the ethics of the kingdom of God, the ethics of the kingdom of God, that we would forgive those who sin against us, that we would love our enemies, that we would not judge one another. And uh, again, as we seek to live out our faith, this is with God's help, that we are asking for his help, with his help, with his strength, we need his help in these days, that it's through the work of God in our lives that, that let us be merciful. Let us be a people who are able to forgive others when they hurt us and sin against us. Let us be a people, again, through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives who even love our enemies. Let us be a people who do not judge one another. My last thought today is that there may be some of you out there that you listen to this sermon or this, this teaching rather, and you may say that these words from Jesus are convicting. I'm struggling. Um, Pastor, you might say, Pastor Kevin, with, with, with everything that's happened, I'm, I'm struggling not to be bitter. I'm struggling not to be angry. Um, I do feel like there's unforgiveness in my heart. 
Um, some of my relationships are not in good shape. And, and you might say, Pastor Kevin, you know, would you pray for me? And I absolutely want to pray with you and for you today. And I have good news for you. Um, God's grace is beautiful. And, and these have been difficult times. And so I believe today that he can forgive us of our sins and he can do a work of healing in our lives and, and he can enable us to, to live out um, this, this lifestyle, this ethic of the kingdom of God, that, that he can help us really grow in this area. I say again, there's good news. One verse I just want to share with you from Psalm 130. It just says, if you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you, there is forgiveness. I remind you today that we serve a good God and with him, there is forgiveness. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again so much for the power of your word, the beauty of your word, the relevance of your word to us today. And Lord, we understand how you are calling your people to live, what it's like to be a part of the kingdom of God, Lord, how we treat one another in the kingdom of God. And Lord, I believe that many of us could say that we are falling short and, and maybe we haven't handled some of the stress over the past few years or some of the the, the, the division and the anxiety and, and, and again, just the uncertainty of everything happening in the world. And Lord, we would just come to you today and say, we need help. Um, Lord, would you deal with our heart? Would you bring a cleansing? Could you forgive us, Lord, of, of those times that we haven't forgiven, those times that we haven't been merciful, those times that we've not been gracious and loving, those times that we are judging one another, harsh toward one another? W would you forgive us, dear Lord? And, and Lord, not only would you forgive us, but we again just pray for a healing work. Uh, we are grateful for your grace. We're grateful for your forgiveness. But we're also grateful, Lord, that you are changing us and you are making us more like Jesus. And Lord, that gives us encouragement and hope today. We just submit ourselves to you, Lord, as we read the Bible together and, and worship together on Sundays and gather together to on Wednesdays, Lord, we just are submitting ourselves to you because we want you to do a good work in our lives. Lord, would you make us people who are merciful and forgiving, people who can love even our enemies, uh, Lord, a people who do not judge one another. Would you develop these characteristics, these qualities, these fruits in our lives, we pray, in greater and greater measure um, day by day. Lord, we love you, and uh, we're grateful for this teaching, and we are asking you to help us to live accordingly. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Church family, God bless you. I, I love you, and it feels good to be able to, to share these uh, Wednesday streams with you again after having a break over the summer. Um, I'd love for you to watch them. <laughs> Maybe you could even share them with a friend. And, uh, and, and invite more people to be a part of this journey with us that we could read the Bible and, uh, and gather together on Wednesday evenings. God bless you. If you live locally and, and are available, we'd love to worship with you on Sunday mornings. We worship outdoors at 915. The forecast looks great. We're going to have a beautiful Sunday morning. We worship in the worship center at 1045. And of course, the live stream is on YouTube and Facebook also at 1045. God bless you, church family. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.